Hey, this is Tyler, technical evangelist for Calman. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate an Azo Color Edge Series CG2730 using a 1D lookup table and a 3x3 matrix. I'm going to be using our SI Advanced Calibration Workflow, C6 Colorimeter, and the VideoForge Pro Pattern Generator. The SI Advanced Calibration Workflow is supported in Calman Studio, Calman Ultimate, and Calman Video Pro. So I've already opened our workflow, SI Advanced Calibration. I'm going to go next. I've already connected our meter, and I've selected PFS Phosphor. For Pattern Generator, we have the VideoForge Pro. I have it set up to 1920 by 1080, 23, 976, 10% window patterns, and RGB limited 8-bit. Now. This tutorial is showing you how to calibrate this monitor to be used as a video display. And this is very popular for people that are just starting out with color grading that can't really afford a nice broadcast monitor yet, and they're just getting their feet wet. So this is a typical monitor that somebody would use that's a step up from a normal computer monitor. So we're gonna be calibrating to video levels or super white video levels, which would be in 8-bit, 16 to 255. So we wanna make sure that since we are calibrating to video levels, that in the monitor's menu system, you go into input levels and set it to limited range 109%. That means super white. So if you wanted to do this as a full range computer monitor, you would just set everything, including Calman, to full range and monitor itself to full range. But we're not doing that in this particular tutorial video. We're going to now connect to the Azo monitor. So I'm gonna go down and select Azo, and we wanna make sure we're selecting Color Edge 1D LUT. Now some of our other monitors support 3D LUTs as well, and we'll be doing another tutorial on that process. But this monitor only supports 1D LUT and a color matrix. So we're gonna hit connect. Now we connect and now it has this mode four, five, and six. Now what that corresponds to, if you go into the menu system of the Azo monitor, it will have three different Cal modes, Cal one, Cal two, Cal three. And those correspond with mode four, five, and six. So Cal three is mode six, which we're gonna be using. Now. The Cal modes, you can't do three separate calibrations for one input. They actually are tied to the different inputs. So in this particular case, HDMI is mode six, DisplayPort is mode five, and DVI is mode four. If for a DisplayPort or DVI connection, then you wanna make sure you're selecting the correct mode to calibrate. So now I'm going to actually go and do a full reset here. And that puts it to its native color gamut and uh, its native white balance and white point. This is where we measure our pre-calibration results. So if we want to read the out-of-the-box performance, which historically has been very good on these monitors, we will do it right now with the sRGB mode. So as you can see, the out-of-the-box sRGB mode is very accurate. The white delta is only 1.8, but we can get it better through calibration. Now this workflow is really set up for a generic monitor. It has some steps that really don't apply. So I'm, I'm just gonna walk you through only the steps that are required. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to the dynamic range page with the Cal mode. So we can see that the, the white balance is not fixed yet, so that will come when we calibrate the grayscale. But we want to set our light output first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the DDC control, display controls. I'm going to change the gamma to 2.4 because that's the closest to our target. In the backlight, I'm going to start turning up because it's we, we're trying to hit 100 nits. Now, since the panel is in its native white point mode, it's really blue. So we actually want to target about 15% brighter than what our target is. So I, I typically say, if it's in its panel native mode, turn it up till it's about 115 nits or 113 nits. And then once we calibrate the grayscale, it will be pretty much right on 100 nits. So I'm gonna reduce this slightly. 
Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. So 112 nits, hopefully after we do the grayscale, it will be right around 100, but we can always tweak it slightly right afterwards. Because of how the video pipeline in this particular monitor works, we're gonna actually do the CMS calibration or technically it's a three by three matrix. It's not an actual color management system. So we're gonna do the CMS calibration or three by three matrix calibration first, then the grayscale. So we're gonna hit auto cal. We're gonna change the stimulus level to 100. Hit okay. Now it's gonna read the red, green, and blue primaries and then calculate a three by three matrix and then upload it. And then we will do the grayscale. Okay, so we've completed the three by three matrix. Now we're gonna go back to the grayscale. And I'm gonna hit the auto cal button and we're gonna select 28 points simpty. You can do up to 56 points, but I'll just spare you uh, the time in this video. We're gonna do 28 points. But if you want it even more detailed and you're doing your own uh, calibration, you can do 56 points. So I'm gonna hit okay, and it's gonna go through the, the auto cal of the 1D lookup table. Okay, the grayscale calibration is complete. Took about a minute and a half. So now we can go back. We can actually read the primaries and secondaries here. And we're looking at delta E is all under one. We could look at our post calibration view, but typically when I evaluate the accuracy of a calibration, I use the color match workflow. So open CalMan color match. And this is where we're gonna read 100, over 100 patches of analysis. It's a lot more than just, you know, reading just the primaries and secondaries. It doesn't always tell you the performance of the monitor or accuracy of the monitor if you're not measuring a whole bunch of points inside the gamut, including like 14 or 15 skin tones. So I'm gonna hit read series here. And as you can see, we had we came out to 102 nits, which is completely fine. There's no way visually you're gonna see the difference between 100 and 102. Now, one thing that people always ask is why is this high right here and then when it reads black it lowers and that's because we're using BT 1886 it's an ITU standard for gamma and it needs the reading of black to properly calculate the curve so until we read black we can't actually calculate the curve Okay, we're almost done reading our 100 patches. This is pretty unbelievable results. Our max delta E 2000 is only 0.6. Anything under one, most color scientists would say that that's non-visible to humans. The average is 
So this shows you how accurate you can get with just a 3x3 matrix and a 1D lookup table if the monitor is properly engineered to be linear and behave correctly. Okay, that's the tutorial. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. We'll respond. Thank you for watching, and don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos coming soon.